Hello friends, uh, just we have seen the new syllabus of 12th standard and also the book is there in PDF form. So derivative is the first topic in 12th standard section B. So before starting a discussion on derivative of 12th standard, uh, it is better to revise what we have studied in 11th standard in the topic derivative. So we will start the revision of derivative from standard 11. So we have seen two definitions, different definitions of derivative. One was given by Newton and another was given by Leibniz. So just we will revise the first definition. It is derivative by first principle given by Newton. For a function y is equal to f of x if we consider one limit, it is limit delta x tends to 0, f of x plus delta x minus f of x is divided by delta x. Now as y is function of x, we will consider delta x as small change in x. So the first value, suppose it is x itself and next value of x is x plus delta x. So corresponding values of y will be f of x and f of x plus delta x. So, delta x is the difference between the values of x and f of x plus delta x minus f of x is the difference between corresponding values of y. And here we have taken limit of their ratios. Now, if this limit exists, then it is called as the derivative of f of x. Now, the values or notations uh, used for this value are it is y dash or f dash of x. It is also denoted by the notation dy by dx. It is not the ratio of dy with dx. It is the d by dx of y. d by dx is the operator. Or it is also denoted as d by dx of the function f of x, derivative of f of x. Okay, now we'll move to the second definition of derivative. It is given by Leibniz, so it is known as Leibniz definition of derivative. Now again we consider the same function y is equal to f of x. We consider delta x as small change in x. So y also changes and here we denote that change in y by delta y. And so the limit will change to limit delta x tends to 0 delta y divided by delta x. If this limit exists then it is called as the derivative of f of x. Just if we compare these two uh, definitions, see what is the difference. The delta y is the difference f of x plus delta x minus f of x from previous definition. So these two definitions are not again different definitions. Only the difference is in symbols used. Okay. So now using these two definitions, we have derived some relations, some formula there. So just we'll revise those. The first part we have will see derivative of standard functions. L I A T E. There are five types of functions. L is logarithmic function. I stands for inverse trigonometric function. There was no formula for inverse trigonometric function in 11th standard. A stands for algebraic function. T for trigonometric function, and E stands for exponential function. So just using the first principle we have derived these formulae. We we'll see what are those. For algebraic function there are two algebraic function. The first is derivative of constant is always zero and over the second it is x raised to n. Derivative of x raised to n is n into x raised to n minus one n is constant and x is variable. So these are the two formulae for derivative of algebraic function. Now we will move next to the derivative of exponential function. Again there are two exponential formulae. Derivative of a raised to x is a raised to x into log a and the second one is derivative of e raised to x is e raised to x itself. See by first formula it is formula number 3. If we replace a by e will become e raised to x into log e but we know that the value of log e is 1 so we are getting the next formula 
So formula number 4. So this is for exponential function. Now we will move forward to logarithmic function and there is only one formula in case of logarithmic functions. This derivative of log x is equal to 1 upon x. Only the condition is that x should be greater than 0 because if x is 0 or negative we can't define log. So this is the first condition. Now we will move to the trigonometric function. Now out of 6 we will make group of 2. Derivative of sin x is cos x and derivative of cos x is equal to minus sin x. We have some similarities and some differences. So you have to remember those. Derivative of sin x is cos x and derivative of cos x is minus sin x. Next. Derivative of tan x and sec square x. See the similarity and differences. Derivative of tan x is sec square x and derivative of cot x is minus cos x square x. Next to R. Derivative of sec x and derivative of cos x. See the similarity and differences. Derivative of sec x is sec x into tan x. Derivative of cos x is cos x into cot x. So these are the formulae for derivatives of some standard functions. So using the Leibniz definition of derivative, we have derived the algebra of derivative. That is derivative of some difference product and quotient. So just we will see the formula only here. If we consider two functions, u is function of x, this is u is f of x, y is equal to g of x. Both are functions of x and they are differentiable functions, that is where a derivative exists. And the relation between them is, if we add them, then it is denoted by y. So y is equal to u plus v. Then, this dy by dx, which can also be written as dy dx of u plus v, now can be obtained by adding the derivatives of u and v separately that is du by dx plus dv by dx which can also be considered using f of x and g of x as d by dx of f of x plus g of x is equal to d by dx of f of x plus d by dx of g of x that is we'll say a derivative of sum equal to sum of derivatives so to elaborate this we see one example simple example Derivative of e raised to x plus sin x. Now using the formula derivative of sum equal to sum of derivatives, we are getting d by dx of e raised to x plus d by dx of sin x. And so it is derivative of e raised to x is e raised to x and derivative of sin x is cos x. So this is the answer. Now we will move forward derivative of difference. Again, we consider u is equal to f of x and v is equal to g of x as differential functions of x and y is equal to u minus v. So, we are getting the formula dy by dx, which is also equal to d by dx of u minus v. Now, it is du by dx minus dv by dx or in form of f of x and g of x. It can be written as d by dx of f of x minus g of x is equal to d by dx of f of x minus d by dx of g of x. That is derivative of difference is also equal to difference of derivatives. So we will elaborate this using one example. Derivative of e raised to x minus tan x is derivative of e raised to x minus derivative of tan x by the above formula and we will go for derivatives of these standard functions which we have derived previously. Derivative of e raised to x is e raised to x and derivative of tan x is sec square x. So, we will move forward now. Derivative of product. Now, as like the previous formula, derivative of product is not equal to product of derivative and derivative of division is not equal to derivative of division. So, we will just revise what we have studied. u is equal to f of x and uh, v is equal to g of x are differential functions of x and y is u into v now. So, we are getting the formula. Derivative of u into v is equal to u into dv by dx plus v into du by dx that is first term into derivative of second plus second term into derivative of first which can also be considered like this using f of x and g of x as 
dy dx of f of x into g of x is equal to f of x into derivative of g of x plus g of x into derivative of f of x. So again, we will see one example on this. Derivative of e raised to x into sin x. First term e raised to x as it is into derivative of second term. This derivative of sin x. The second term sin x as it is into derivative of first term. It is dy dx of e raised to x. And so by using the formula for derivative of standard function e raised to x into derivative of sin x is now cos x plus sin x into derivative of e raised to x is e raised to x itself. Now we may go for one more step of simplification. We can take e raised to x common in this case only. It is not happen uh, or it is not going to happen in every case. Okay. So we will move forward. One corollary we have uh, seen from this it is a derivative of t into v. Here we have the product derivative product but in the product one term is constant and one is variable. So in that case constant can be taken outside the derivative. So its proof is obtained by the previous formula only. Just we will see one example here to get the idea clear. dy dx of 5 into sin x is equal to 5 is taken outside the derivative. 5 into dy dx of sin x and it is equal to 5 cos x. Okay. <clears throat> so now derivative of quotient. Again we will consider the same function u is equal to f of x and v is equal to g of x. And now y is equal to u divided by v where v should not be 0 this must condition so we are getting the formula d by dx of u divided by v is equal to v into du by dx minus u into dv by dx divided by v square or inverse we say denominator into derivative of numerator minus numerator into derivative of denominator divided by denominator square so in form of f of x and g of x this formula may be written like this dy dx of f of x upon g of x is g of x into derivative of f of x minus f of x into derivative of g of x divided by g of x square. Okay, so again we will see one example to get the clear idea of this formula. We will consider similar form of example derivative of e raised to x upon sin x. Now denominator is sin x into derivative of numerator it is d by dx of e raised to x minus numerator e raised to x into derivative of denominator that is d by dx of sin x whole divided by denominator square just we have used the previous formula and now go for the derivative of standard functions in the numerator. So sin x into derivative of e raised to x is e raised to x minus e raised to x into derivative of sin x is cos x. Again particularly in this case we can take e raised to x common in the numerator. So this is what we have seen about the algebra of derivative. So now we will move forward. Already we have proved one relation between continuity and differentiable. Continuity was a previous topic which we have studied in the 11th standard limit and continuity. And so we, we have seen the relation between continuity and differentiality. So we have proved the theorem that every differentiable function is continuous. If a function is a differentiable at a point, then it should be continuous at that point. So this is what we have seen. F of x is differentiable at x is equal to a, then f of x is continuous at x is equal to a. This is what we have proved. But the converse of this theorem is not true. What is the converse? Every continuous function is differentiable is not true. So what statement we are getting now? If a function is continuous, then it may or may not be differentiable. It may be differentiable or may not be differentiable or in another form we may say if a function is continuous then it is not necessarily differentiable. It is not necessarily differentiable and we have seen one counter example there 
we have seen f of x is equal to mod x. Already we have proved that it is continuous at x is equal to 0 in continuity topic. And we have observed that it is not differentiable at x is equal to 0. If you are remembering, the left hand derivative is becoming minus 1 and right hand derivative is becoming plus 1. So derivative will not exist at x is equal to 0. So function is continuous but not differentiable. And there are many examples where function is continuous as well as differentiable. So if a function is continuous, then it is not necessarily differentiable. It may or may not be differentiable. That is, this is what we have. So with this, we are going to close this session. I hope uh, you have liked it. So very soon, we'll go for the next section. One more point it is. So we'll start with the first concept from the topic derivative of 12th standard in the next section. Thank you. Thank you very much.